Greetings. It's been continuously said that 4, 6, or even 8 GB of VRAM is not enough anymore. However, most of the Steam users still play on 1080p resolution, and GTX 1650 is the most popular graphics card. Today I'm gonna be testing the mobile version, the GTX 1650. It has 4GB of video memory, and paired with the i5 11th gen. So, let's dive right into it. The first game for today is Atomic Heart. We're using 1080p high, or ultra settings, except for shadows and ambient occlusion, which are set to medium. The game looks beautiful, and in open locations we have 45 to 60 FPS. Whereas in closed space locations the frame rate jumps into 100, which is more than playable, considering that you spend plenty of time underground. VRAM is under control, and it stays beneath 3.5 gigabytes. The next game is Apex Legends, one of the most popular games on Steam. Graphics here are set to high, only spot shadows are low, because this setting is kind of broken. And here I'm enjoying my 60 plus FPS all of the time experience. Even in intensive scenes like this one, the frame rate tries to stay above 70, which is great. By the way, all of the games for today are tested on 1080p resolution, and I will mention out loud if some upscaling techniques, like FSR, are used. Ironically, this time comes right now, because in Call of Duty Warzone, I used FSR, set on quality, other settings you can see on your screen. I'm not able to summarize them as high or medium. I guess it's something between. Average FPS I get is around 60, but it slightly drops from this point. VRAM usage is okay, as we have almost half a gigabyte of spare memory. Call of Duty Warzo is definitely a hardest battle royale games to run on your PC. In more GPU intensive scenes, the frame rate can drop to 50 or even lower 40s. FSR won't help again because otherwise the system will be CPU bound. The next game is Death Stranding, PC version of which was released in 2020. It's very optimized, on maximum settings we get 70 FPS on average. Also, these settings allow us to see all of those stunning cutscenes on stable 60 FTS, because there is a lock of the frame rate during the cutscenes in this game. Even though we got VRAM warning message, there are no problems with stuttering and the gameplay is very smooth. This is Forspoken, the most outrageous release of 2023 so far. I'm using low memory streaming, standard graphics, and FSR, set to quality. Fortunately, you don't have to buy the full version to evaluate the performance. I'm recording the demo, at least, offering a trial version is honest to players. You have my respect. Average FPS is slightly above 30, and there's clearly not enough RAM and VRAM. It's disappointing that with no providing of good graphics, the game masks that much of APC strength. The next game we'll be testing is Forza Horizon 4. Thousands of players are still visiting this game every day, including myself. Here I'm using the ultra settings per set, and while playing, I'm getting 60 FPS on average, which is more than enough for a racing game. At night, while driving to the city, the frame rate is great, and nothing bothers me while playing with those beautiful visuals. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, the oldest game for today, yet it looks unbelievably gorgeous. It still gives odds to modern AAA games, and runs on a budget PC. Obviously using very high settings, and easily getting at least 45 FPS on average, even at intensive combat scenes, like this one. This frame rate is enough for comfortably playing this game. FPS during the cutscenes is dramatically lower, and it's okay, since they're usually not very dynamic. In 2017, the game won all the rewards for the best acting performance, and fans are looking forward to play the sequel. Now for modern AAA, Hitman 3 was released in 2021, and got plenty of positive reviews. The optimization of this game is commendable, and utilizing high settings, we can get 55 to 60 FPS on average. VRAM is under control, and even though it's theoretically slightly above the limit, the gameplay is smooth, 
and frame rate is stable. So good that today, we have a triple A developer who actually cares about the players. Geppetto's puppet. We need your help. The next game is brand new Lies of P, release date of which is going to be late 2023. Using the high settings per set, except for shadows, which are set to medium, apparently. High shadows cause stuttering on my system. The optimization of this game is surprisingly good. And with high textures, VRAM usage is lower than 3.5 gigabytes. Average FPS here is 50, which is good for a 2023 title. This interesting Souls-like game is going to come out in September of this year. What's your greatest weakness? Life is Strange True Colors It's the latest Life is Strange title. Environment visuals are stunning. I'm using the very high settings per set, and just like this I get 55 to 60 average FPS, when in reality 30 would be enough for a story-based game. Now we have three games in a row with a good optimization. Are you serious? We've talked about this again and again. Metro Exodus is a game in post-apocalypse. I'm using high settings, but tessellation and hairworks are turned off. On the screen is the standard version of the game, not the enhanced one. Thus, FPS we get is around 55, and VRAM usage is under the limit. At closed space locations, FPS goes even higher. Nothing else here is left to say. Let's move on. Resident Evil 4 starts with talking about graphics. They might seem high at first, but I can assure you, there are a lot of compromises if you look closer. You will see low shadows, no volumetrics, no reflections, and no ambient occlusion. Advanced viewers might also see interlaced rendering mode, which bumps up the performance more than FSR. This game is undeservedly praised for good optimization. At the same time, having the same system requirements as Resident Evil Village, the remake runs much worse. Therefore, with my settings I can only get 45 to 50 FPS, which is disappointing. At least, VRAM is under for gigabytes. This date from the Shadow of the Tomb Raider was released in 2018, yet it is still used for testing because it's got beautiful visuals and one of the best gaming benchmarks ever, which shows us 58 FPS on average. Settings can be seen as well. In the cutscenes, the FPS might get slightly lower, but the important thing is that the frame rate is stable because VRAM is under 3.6 gigabytes, not getting closer to the threshold. The last game for today is The Witcher 3 next-gen version, which is completely different game in terms of optimization and approach to the visuals. It was released in the end of 2022, and I'm using the ultra settings per set, except for foliage visibility range and hairworks. In the most GPU-intensive city area, the FPS drops to 40, or even lower 30s, but in the bushy areas or fields the frame rate is close to 50, and the average it is somewhere between. In conclusion, VRAM is important, but not the most defining factor in GPU performance. No doubts that having more VRAM is better, that the advantage comes more visible when playing on ultra settings or higher resolutions. In this video, we got decent frame rate in most of the popular and recent games, and 1650 is not even the fastest GPU with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. For the first time, I can literally say thank you for watching my videos till the end. If you enjoy it, please like and write down in the comments if you want the part 2. That's it for the video, bye bye.